<clears throat> What's going on, fellas? It's your boy, Potato Jet, and welcome to the brand new Potato Jet Studio. <laughs> I've been waiting for this day for my entire life. Not quite done yet. Hardest part so far is getting this room acoustically treated because you're probably still even hearing a little bit of echoes now, but I'm still waiting for a few more acoustic panels to come in, so hopefully they'll deaden that out. Still in the works, I wanna kinda get maybe like a, like a guitar here or something. I don't even play guitar, but I think it'll look pretty cool. Anyways, Osmo Pocket just came in the mail. I bought it with my own money, not sponsored by DJI or anything. Holy crap, that really is small. There she is, looks pretty cool. Definitely fits in your pocket, no issues. DJI always makes you like activate their cameras before you can use it. DJI Mimo app, that's what I need. While well, I'm downloading, I might as well just check my emails real quick. Delete, 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 delete. Uh-oh, wait, I think I needed that one. Okay, now I got a firmware update to do. I'm just gonna cut or else it's gonna be like hours and hours of footage I have to edit through. So I'll come back once this is fully charged up and ready to go. And we're back, we're fully updated. One thing I'm wondering, is there a good way to set this down? Like it kinda can stand like that, but one little nudge and then it'll tip over. If they added a little tiny little foot right there, it would definitely help if you have your phone attached to it, cause right now it's a little bit front heavy, so just a little bit, ah! Yeah, any other way you set it down, the gimbal's gonna like hit the surface. That's kinda neat, it's, it's definitely, very, very smooth. Yeah, with this lighting, it definitely looks pretty good and sharp, and uh, here's what the audio sounds like straight from the Osmo, and uh, that's pretty neat. As far as I can see right now, the quality out of this little camera seems pretty impressive, especially if you consider the size of this thing. The lens itself is just like barely bigger than one of my fingernails, and uh, that's pretty cool. Now the screen itself is very small and basic, but a lot of times that's all you need. When you're vlogging, you wanna be looking at the lens anyways, not the monitor. And a lot of times I just love that flip out screen, not really just to constantly check on it, but just to see, okay, is the exposure decent? Is the frame somewhat what I'm expecting? Or does it just look terrible? This screen's definitely not perfect, but it's enough to see, is this frame okay? Is this gonna be usable later? Let's do some more tests. Let's get out of this studio, shall we? What does it shoot? 1080? 4K. No, it does not. Yeah, it says 4K 30. Oh, 4K 60. Oh, wow, look at that. Welcome to the new vlog of Adventures in Steven Jean. <laughs> oh, you're very prickly. It's a really odd feeling just carrying this little tiny thing around. I feel like I'm not really even carrying around a camera. So I'm, I'd be really impressed if the quality out of this thing is good. It can go inverted, just flip it over upside down, and then you can get into inverted mode. Here we're going about five miles per hour or so. How's it sound? Is there a lot of wind noise? Here's how I look backlit. And if I go into direct sunlight, it looks like that. You feel pretty good about doing cartwheels? <laughs> I told you what turning 30 does to you. I mean, now imagine what turning 40 does to you. One thing that the GoPro has is the super view mode, which can give you that super wide angle lens. The Osmo Pocket is kind of limited to this size. So if you want that super wide angle frame, which you might want, especially if you're doing some sports, you want to film yourself doing cool tricks on a skateboard or something, it's going to be easier on the GoPro. Yeah, on the GoPro, I can see the entire Jeep post to the pocket. Really? Where it's like cropped in, yeah. The Osmo is like a close-up. The GoPro is like a medium shot. You hold the GoPro, it's small, but you can still see that you're clearly filming. This on the other hand is like, you can barely tell I'm filming anything at all. Yeah. Just say that it's your uh, inhaler. <laughs> yeah, it's the inhaler just, or vape pen. Jonathan, why are you going through all that work when you could just use this camera? <laughs> Let's see who can shoot it better. Jonathan's silly little rig or the Osmo Pocket? All right, so I have the GoPro on the right and the Osmo on the left. 
But let's see how they both do next to each other in a low light. The sky is still a little bit blue, so we're getting a little bit of light from that. They seem to be doing pretty similar. The Osmo is going to have the slight advantage in terms of stabilization because it's on a gimbal opposed to a digital stabilization. So you don't get as much of that jiggle. With a little bit of shakiness and vibration, the GoPro has to do a digital stabilization. So if I do some vibrations on here, you can see that it kind of looks blurry. It gives it this weird digital stabilization effect. But on the Osmo, the camera itself is stabilized. So I can kind of shake it around and the camera itself is stable. So it doesn't have to do any sort of digital stabilization. So the Osmo probably has a little bit of an advantage there. All right, so now we have the iPhone XS Max on the right and I don't have it on a gimbal right now. So it's not stabilized. It just has a little bit of that optical stabilization, but see how these two compare. And that's one of the biggest issues with these small censored cameras. They may look great and super sharp, but as soon as we start losing light, that's when the full frame camera cameras really come into play. We're about to uh, hit up one of the hottest clubs in LA on a Saturday night. Let's go, Ikea. One thing for sure is that this thing is absolutely tiny. So if you're self-conscious about vlogging in public, this thing is so small that people don't even like pay attention to it. Right now, if I had my EOS R and vlogging, a ton of people would be just staring at me like, what the hell is he doing? But here, I'm just going around filming in 4K and it's not a problem. So after playing with this for a couple of days, I'm definitely impressed considering its size. It's so small that when you carry it and point it around, you're like, is this actually getting decent footage? But it does, so that's really impressive. Now, the question is, who is this for? I think the biggest selling point of this is the size that you can throw it in your pocket or purse or bag, and it barely takes up any space and it's stabilized with a gimbal, which is pretty impressive. Now, the quality is good out of this thing, but I wouldn't consider it to be like perfect professional looking. It's not going to replace like putting a mirrorless or a DSLR on a gimbal. That's still going to give you a better image, but this is in the pocket size category. So when it comes to pocket size, these are probably the most popular items right now. And this definitely competes with these other three, but I still don't think it destroys all these other cameras. They all have their strengths. Which one of these four would you choose? Well, a lot of that depends on who you are, what your needs are. Me personally, I would probably go for the G7X first simply because it matches well with these cameras. The colors are really nice. It has a one inch sensor. It has a flip out screen so it's wide enough to film yourself. The sound quality is pretty decent out of this. The optical zoom I think is very cool especially if you're traveling and you see like a monkey flying across a tree or something you're like oh I want to film that. You could zoom in and still maintain like excellent picture quality. It's flexible and the picture quality out of this one inch sensor is pretty comparable to the ADD that I'm filming on right now. Now. The Osmo Pocket does appear to be quite a bit sharper because of that 4K, but I just really love how the G7X just looks. The G7X just looks very natural and pleasant and organic. The Osmo Pocket looks great, but it does look like a little bit of digital sharpening. It kind of reminds me of like the original DJI Mavic. So if I'm traveling, I could only bring one of these. I'd probably throw this in my pocket. And then if I had space to bring a second camera, I would probably go for the Insta360 One X just because you can get some very unique shots out of it and I'll be using this to get my main shots this to get kind of my specialty shots I would probably bring the GoPro as a third in case I wanted to do some mounting I really like how simple this thing is I just press it and the stabilization is good and the main thing I really like about the GoPro is that it has that super wide angle view so I can just hold it out and I know that not only am I just showing my face but my whole body and if I have a few friends with me I get them all in the shot so even though that the pocket is an awesome camera it would be like the last kid I would pick to be on my team and he'll be all sad like I've been picked last. And it's an awesome camera, but the reason why I'd pick it last is because it's just not super versatile. It does one thing well, which is a good medium shot 
on a gimbal, so which is smooth. Now, one thing I did notice is that even though it's on a gimbal, it's not super smooth simply because it's so small. I mean, the stabilization on the camera does an excellent job, but I always talk about how heavier the camera is, the more stable your footage is gonna be. That's true even in this gimbal. You don't really feel it when you're filming with your hands, but when you see the footage, you always see a little bit of this like floatiness, and that just naturally happens when you're filming with such a small camera. The heavier your camera gets, the more fluid you're naturally gonna float around because you have all that energy going in that direction. Even putting this on a gimbal, it has enough mass to where you can make it glide. And just like any other camera, to smoothen it out even more, you could always cheat it a little bit by shooting slow-mo. So I shot a couple clips at 60 frames per second, and then I slowed it down to 50%, and it looked much more fluid. Those were the shots where it just looked like the camera was gliding through the air, which is generally what you're trying to achieve with the gimbal. When you play back the clips in real time, I always just noticed a little bit of that up and down motion. I also have to admit, I'm not the best operator either. There's a lot more people with smoother hands than me, but generally speaking, heavier the gimbal, the smoother and more floaty floaty everything feels. Another little complaint I have is that you can't put it into 24 frames per second in this device. You have to plug it into your phone and then enter pro mode, and then you can have access to 24 frames per second. So you need your phone to put it into 24 frames per second, but once you remove it, you can't really adjust that many parameters. I feel like 24 frames per second should be an easy feature to access, especially for someone like me that films everything in 24. But I bet the firmware updates come in pretty soon because I can't be the only one complaining about that. Another reason why this wouldn't be my top pick is simply because you're stuck with one lens. All right, so here I'm gonna put this camera right next to my vlogging camera right here and notice that it's so much wider on the vlog camera. And I personally like to vlog with a super wide angle lens. So the GoPro has that advantage there where it could go in super wide. It could also go in tighter just like this looks. The G7X Mark II shoots medium all the way to tight and the Insta360 can be a wide shot but it can also just film everything around you. It's crazy. Oh, I almost forgot the most popular pocket size camera, your phone. And you could take your phone, throw it on a gimbal and get very similar results as this guy. But this is no longer pocket size so I'm gonna exclude this for now. You can get a lot done out of this little camera. So it is impressive depending on what you do and what you're interested in filming, this might be a really awesome option for you. And I'm sure there's many of you guys that would love to use this and it probably fits your style of filmmaking and your needs. So if that's the case, let me know below in the comments and I'm gonna give this away to one of you guys. So all you gotta do, leave a comment, let me know what you wanna do with it and I'll send it out to one of you guys. All right, so let's close this off with reading some comments from my last video, traveling with camera gear, all about how to travel with it, how what to do at the airport. Top comment is from Mustafa. You can travel for free if you tie balloons to your house. <laughs> okay, I'll admit that's kind of funny. That deserves a heart. Matty Hapoyo says, the worst part of filmmaking is traveling with gear. Today is my first trip in like six years where I'm not filming anything. Well, except for some family clips. How uh, you can never fully leave the camera at home. <laughs> I agree with that, especially now that I'm YouTubing. Like I cannot go anywhere without bringing a camera because as soon as I see beautiful scenery, my instinct is like, grab the camera, get this awesome shot. Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera, where is it? What have you done to it? It's here back in my possession and I'm gonna make a video on it, but things have just been so slow because it's just been like moving all this stuff and I'm so exhausted from moving, but finally all the heavy lifting and all the hard work is done so I can start pumping out videos. We try to constantly figure out how to consolidate the gear into the least amount of cases. Image of gigantic pile of cases full of gear appears. <laughs> that is exactly our life. And that's as consolidated as we can get. We travel with a ton of gear. It sucks. You should do a camera giveaway. Doing that right now when there's a lot more coming. So have you subscribed yet? How does Steve have time while coaching the Golden State Warriors? I don't get that joke. Does he look like the Golden State Warriors? <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God, that looks just like Steve. Holy crap, that's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, Steve, that's usually how he looks on set too. <laughs> All right, I'm out. I'll see you guys later.